here we got the community policing grant yesterday for seven uh, officers and we're very excited for that uh, it was a very competitive process and uh, you know only a f very few departments get selected for this and uh, you know in addition it's community policing week and that's a big focus of the direction that I want to go and, and we're trying to bring the department back to more community oriented policing uh, We've been working hard to highlight a lot of the good things that happened within this department uh, over the last eight or nine months. And what we've seen is we've had an increase in uh, applicants, and we haven't had a problem filling the vacancies that we have. And, you know, in years past, that's been an issue. And I believe part of that is the focus on, you know, our focus on community policing. So with this grant comes uh, seven police officers. One will be a sergeant and six uh, patrol officers. And the idea is and the grant was written to focus on the Broadway corridor, which was a department focus back in the 90s. And they had substantial gains made back then and also won some national awards for their efforts down there. But the problem is, is that the efforts weren't sustained. So we're going to uh, take another bite at this apple and uh, assign these officers down uh, in the Broadway corridor area, focusing on, uh, you know, problem locations. Uh, many of them revolve around some of the motels. Uh, the issues that we see are... Uh, issues with uh, human trafficking, uh, illegal drug use, drug sales, uh, disturbances, assaults, along with the issues of homelessness and mental health. So this isn't a, a zero tolerance program. Instead, it focuses a lot on getting to the root of the issue. Um, you know, some of the issues are lack of uh, drug treatment, chemical abuse treatment, as well as uh, our need to really help with the human trafficking issues that the city faces. I also know the impact that officers can have when they're in an area. These officers will be primarily on foot and bike patrol. They will not be uh, in a car very often. They're going to be a very visible presence in that neighborhood. And I'm really excited to see the difference that we're going to make. I think it's going to be substantial. It's going to have an economic uh, benefit to the neighborhood. And uh, you'll see when we can assign officers to a specific area and have the proper staffing to do community policing, you're going to see a difference. So uh, the grant will begin uh, January 1st. Obviously, we'll have to hire the officers and get them trained in. So uh, in the springtime, look for these seven additional staff members in the Broadway corridor area. Okay? As you mentioned, um, you guys have taken a bite at that apple before. Can you explain um, what the successes were and what your hope is yeah, so in the 90s, everything that I hear about was, uh, you know, a lot of the similar issues with uh, crime and disorder, uh, problem locations, and uh, the issue is, is sustaining it, right? So we need to put uh, efforts into place to sustain our gains, and that may be uh, ensuring that we always have proper police staffing down there. Uh, because of economic reasons, you know, our staffing numbers have gone down, and that has hurt our abilities to do community policing. You cannot do community policing when you're just responding to 911 calls. So this grant will really give us a dedicated staff that can focus on the issues there and, and not chase their tail by answering 911 calls. Can you tell us do you have boundaries for the area that's going to be in the um, Yeah, well, so they're, they're pretty much focusing in the commercial area of Broadway from... Um, Oh, what streets would they be, Nikki? Um, uh, we haven't really set them up yet, but it'll be addressed primarily around where the calls are and where the, the issues are focused, right? So we're going to put cops on the dots, so to speak, where we have the issues. That's where they'll be focusing. And obviously a big part of this is going to be data-driven. Uh, so we will be focusing on uh, you know, regular review of our uh, efforts. Now I'll tell you this. This year we started tracking calls for service by address. And since we just started tracking that, probably in uh, March or April, we've seen a significant decline in the calls for service to some of the motels and problem locations. So just that effort has already made a difference. Um, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be location driven. People might hear the number of extra officers, you said seven, and think, well, what's that gonna do? That's not gonna make a big difference. Talk about just how big of an impact seven officers, additional officers, can have on an area. Yeah, well, so we have a defined, clear area. Uh, we know when they're not chasing those 911 calls, when they have the time dedicated, 
to being proactive and working on these issues. I mean, look at the success that the HOT team has had on helping us address homeless issues. So when we have those dedicated officers that are focusing on um, where the problems are, those problem locations, uh, we know they can make a difference. I mean, and we, we see it time and time again when you can dedicate an officer to working on problems, they're successful. And the results are often well beyond just reducing crime, and it goes into the areas of, uh, of economic development and success as well. Yeah, uh, well, it's great because, like I said, I don't know how many people apply, how many agencies apply, but uh, it's it's definitely in the uh, the hundreds, if not thousands. So for us to get this grant is, it's, I think it speaks volumes of our our grant proposal and the effort that we intend to make here. So we are very excited. With that, with that money, I assume then you'll be able to, because you're going to need additional body cams, right? Correct. So that'll that'll help take care of that. Yeah. Well, it doesn't cover equipment. But the seven cameras, you know, we'll have to, we'll, we'll figure out where that's going to come from. It's when you start talking dozens and dozens of cameras, that's where it gets expensive. Yeah. So are we talking South Corridor or North Corridor? It'll be a little bit of no, a little bit of both. Yeah. So one of the things that we've seen, North had made a concerted effort earlier this year to focus on these hot spots, and we've seen it kind of pushed a little bit south, and uh, in turn the south numbers are going up. So um, some of this may push uh, problems. Uh, outside of that boundary, which, you know, we're going to continue to push no matter where they go and hopefully push the problems right out of the city. All right? Okay. Thanks. Good morning. We're going to discuss the shooting in the 2600 block of North Meadow Oak uh, late yesterday afternoon. Shortly after 4 o'clock yesterday, members of the Wichita Police Department were dispatched to an assault report in the 2600 block of North Meadow Oak. Upon arrival, they located a 22-year-old female with a severe head injury inside of the residence. This female was transported to Wesley Hospital in extremely critical condition. Uh, early on in the investigation, uh, investigators learned that family members had been trying to contact the 22-year-old female throughout the day, but were unable to contact her. Uh, she was supposed to pick her mother up from work uh, shortly after 3 o'clock yesterday, but did not show up. So the mother ended up uh, getting a ride home from a co-worker. Uh, that is when she discovered her daughter inside of the residence. Through interviews with family members, uh, we learned that the victim had recently broken up with her boyfriend uh, a couple weeks earlier, uh, that there had been um, basic communications off and on over the last two weeks with him. Uh, we were able to locate the ex-boyfriend at a residence in Andover where he was transported up to the city building. Late last night, early this morning, we booked a 27-year-old male into the Sedgwick County detention facility for one count attempted first degree murder and ag burglary uh, late yesterday or I'm sorry early this morning uh, we were able to recover a weapon uh, from a lake in uh, far east Wichita questions what type of weapon it was a handgun I'm sorry the boyfriend is the 27 year old yes okay. ex-boyfriend A lake in Far East, Wichita. The injury that the female suffered, you said severe head injury. Was it a gunshot wound? It's a gunshot wound to her head, yes. Were there multiple shots uh, fired within the residence? No, there, wasn't. there was only one shot fired. So she wasn't found until late yesterday afternoon. Any idea when this, when this happened? We believe it happened sometime before noon yesterday. So she was there for at least a few hours? Yes, she was. Okay, anything else? Uh, what's the condition of this woman now? She's in critical condition.
guys. That's all we have today. Does anybody have any questions on anything? Yeah, we'll get it to you. Is there any update on clouds? No cloud update? No. No more? I, we haven't received any any additional um, calls or cases of concern, obviously. Still in the mind of everybody, and, and like we said yesterday, we're going to take it very seriously, and we arrested one person, and, and it's dramatically um, declined in, in uh, the things that are going on today. So school's in session. Everybody's safe. We're good to go. Do you have any information on this um, possible firebomb at that gay pride parade a couple of weeks ago? You know, the only thing that I know about that is it was a, a destruction to auto case. And uh, what we are investigating is just a um, part of the vehicle had been cut underneath the U-Haul truck that was at that location. Uh, nothing to um, give any kind of information as to who could have possibly done that. There was a gas can underneath. So I'm not sure about any kind of incendiary device. Um, the only thing that we're, we're investigating is uh, cut wire to the, to the truck. When was that? That was a couple weeks ago? Mm. Yeah, yeah, end of September. Where was it? Uh, you know, I'm not sure uh, right now. We can get that information. I think that individual had sent uh, some news release or something to the uh, stations. We, we have not talked about it. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.